tornado outbreak. That sucker's coming this way. Rooting storms unleash twisters in Texas, building up to the big one. My God, it's a wedge. This thing is huge. I remember thinking, God, please don't take my family. Ice storm. When freezing rain coats the landscape, branches become lethal weapons. Nothing below is safe. Flash flood. A daring rescue in Brazil almost turns tragic. During those two seconds in the fall, I saw my entire life, and I imagined this was it. I was finished. Powerful storms, and the people who survive them, coming up on Storm Warning. really still. LaDonna Peterson lives in the Texas farming town of Gerald. It was a lot more humid, a lot hotter, but the clouds looked fine, the sky looked fine. But things are not fine. On that particular day, the atmosphere was very warm at low levels. We had a lot of moisture that come in from the Gulf of Mexico. Sensing something big is brewing, meteorologist Michael Biggerstaff checks his Doppler radar equipment at nearby Texas A&M University. We had uh, much cooler air at mid-levels. And so if you have cool air above warm air, the potential for, for explosive cloud development was there, like a, a stick of dynamite. Bigger staff goes to alert graduate students who videotape storms. We gotta get south, and we gotta get south fast. By the time they hit the road, thunderstorms have grown into powerful supercells, giant storm systems which drop tornadoes. One. Not far away, a family is rolling tape on the storm, too, as a monstrous funnel drops from the sky. That's not too far off, all that. Swirling earth is sucked up to complete the tornado. I tell you what, that sucker's coming this way. A twister's destructive power is measured on what is called the Fujita scale, from F1 to F5. My God, it's a wedge. This thing is huge. F5 tornado has wind speeds of more than 260 miles per hour. It can rip the concrete or asphalt off of roads. It's essentially a giant vacuum cleaner. Kids, it's coming toward our house. LaDonna Peterson watches the F5 approach. She has no storm cellar to run to. Please stop it, you go away, please. It was just this huge, massive black cloud coming at us. And it was so wide that, from what I can see, just by looking dead ahead, that's all I could see. LaDonna's husband, Donnie, hears about the twister on the radio. This is a severe weather statement. There are tornadoes near Belton. I started heading home as fast as I could. I could see a big black tornado, you know, close to Gerald. I mean, monster. As Donnie hurries home, the tornado is barreling toward his family. I just started hollering at the kids and my mother-in-law told them to get in the bathroom, get in the tub, and I pulled all the sick cushions off and took them in the bathroom with us. The light started flickering. Then I saw the tin being ripped off the back of the roof of the barn. And that's when I covered my head up. And then the bathroom door flew open. I remember thinking, you know, God, please don't, please don't take my son, don't take my family. Don't let me live if they are gone. The F5 moves on. LaDonna's home is obliterated. 
When I finally was able to look around, it was like a war zone out here. I mean, it looked like someone had just dropped a bomb and just wiped everything out. Donnie finds his family, but not his town. All the asphalt was gone on the, the road I was on. There's trucks we've never found. I mean, I've never in my life seen anything like this. All the trees were gone. All the buildings were gone. All the fences were gone. It sucked the grass out of the ground. The F5 dissipates, but the supercell's tremendous swirling energy is intact and heading north. 25 miles away, Jay Turney steps outside the supermarket where he works. Jay hasn't heard about the tornadoes. There was a charge in the air. I think everybody knew that something was going to happen. But exactly what, no one knows. We have no way of getting a warning because we're a business. We don't sit and watch TV. Supermarket manager Larry Foray doesn't know anything until he spots a funnel dropping down. It was real thin, like a pencil type deal, and it looks like it was so far up in the sky. I thought that something might happen, but not, not tornado-wise. There was a Cedar Park police officer coming up, and, and Larry was coming back in, and he said, we need to get everybody inside, and he was grabbing customers and pulling them back inside. Larry said, tell everybody to stay in the store, to meet the center of the store, so we can show them where the meat cooler is. He went and started grabbing customers and going to the center of the store for where the meat cooler was. When we come back, the shoppers will learn if this refuge will protect them. And freezing rains cause a desperate struggle for survival. With a monstrous tornado barreling toward them across the Texas landscape, supermarket shoppers crowd into a meat locker for protection. Manager Larry Foray hopes the shelter is strong enough. The meat cooler is a solid room, and, and there's nothing overhead if, you know, if the roof were to come down. The thing that went through my head was just try to get everybody safe. Jay Turney doesn't make it to safety. When it hit, I was running. I was running as hard as I could to, to the meat cooler, because that's where I really wanted to be. I was scared. I remember a sound like an explosion. And I, hurtled, I curled up into a fetal position, covering my head. Everybody was screaming and hollering. Most of those people never had experienced anything like this, and nobody knew what was going to happen. I think a lot of people thought that they were probably going to die. Then, everything goes still. My thoughts were, I'll be damned, I didn't die. The tornado has split the supermarket down the middle. There were wires everywhere. There were six inches of water on the floor as well. Jay Turney finds his survival a miracle. The power of nature is just pure God. And whatever he wants to do is what he's going to do. You can't stop it. The supercell thunderstorm that spawned this tornado continues north, still packing tremendous energy. It approaches a densely populated subdivision. I had no idea what was coming. When I first thought, I wasn't really afraid. Because we looked up in there, and here's this white plume, just a white funnel directly above the house. So I said, well, I'll film it. Look at that tail coming down, will you? Look at that. Isn't that something? Floyd Zahn stands and films the birth of a twister right above him. Boy, get in here, honey. Get in here, son. On the other side of the neighborhood, Paul Walshek is just as captivated by the emerging monster. Paul, we're scared. I know. I'll be right in. The thing is going, coming right at us. I didn't run when I first saw the uh, tornado because I thought it was a fairly small tornado. The next thing my son said was, look on the ground, Ed, and that's when I saw the debris circling. It looked like a big bird circling. Freaky lightning coming down each side of it. His neighbor's camera, abandoned by now, records the chaos. Floyd Zahn is right beneath the vortex. I know there's bigger objects like the trusses and whole sheets of plywood. Then I can tell just right over the house. Me, me and the boy stood at the door, 
and filmed until it was tearing the tree up behind us. And I shut the door. And then we backed up in the hallway, and then the glass started breaking. What is that? Fire up. Your window just closed. That's my living room. Finally, it's over. When Floyd ventures back outside, 70 homes are damaged. There's two houses away from us. Cars and trucks are tossed on their sides. Experts later calculate the neighborhood was hit by an F3 with winds at 160 miles per hour. Man, look at that damn thing. I just slice through there, you know? I guess I, maybe I'm just naive. I just never did realize how bad it was. My wife keeps telling me I was stupid. Keeps telling me I, we could have been wiped off the uh, face of the earth. 29 people and an entire town were wiped off the face of the earth. The day that supercells dropped an unprecedented amount of destruction on Central Texas. It's amazing what Mother Nature will throw at you. The friends that I no longer have here that are gone. But I don't think I've ever been that scared in my life and I hope to never be that scared again. Coming up, a frigid ice storm leaves a motorist struggling for her life and torrential rains flood an entire city. In the genteel towns of the American Southeast, winters tend to be mild. But one year, cold descends on the south. A bank of warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico intersects a layer of cold, dry air moving down from Canada. Temperatures plummet. It begins to rain. That storm um, had freezing rain going all the way from Texas uh, to Arkansas, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Kathy Jones, with the National Cold Regions Research Lab, studies how ice forms in a storm like this. It freezes because the heat that's in the rain gets removed by the cold air and by the, uh, by the wind blowing by. In the south, freezing rain begins to ice over everything it touches. Ice can add a lot of weight to, uh, to, to structures. The twig can get so it, it weighs 50 times what it weighed and there's no ice on it at all. It takes just a little bit of ice, really, for the branches to start falling off the trees. In Florence, Alabama, it gets this cold only once or twice each decade. And many people don't understand the danger. It was like 18 degrees. I, I just thought it was a fun day to play. I didn't think it was as bad as it was. It was the year that Jackie Rainwater was crowned queen of the local state college. The new Miss UNA is contestant number two, Jackie Rainwater. But her charmed life takes a sudden turn when she decides to take a friend for a ride in the freak storm. We were going to go to lunch and just probably wasn't in the car two minutes when the tree limb fell. <laughs> A tree limb has crushed the car, with Jackie in the driver's seat. Paramedic Jeff Street is the first rescue worker on the scene. But the tree limb was just completely covered her up, it was in her hair. And I could see the mist from where she was breathing. I could get to her neck, so I could feel she had a pulse. So I knew she was alive right then, but I couldn't get her to respond. After another tree limb falls, Jackie is trapped even tighter inside the car. The tree limb had forked, and one of the left fork was going to the back of her head. The skull was visible. The right fork branched off, and it went into her chest. And that's when she stopped breathing, and we lost the pulse. Finally, Jackie is freed and rushed to the hospital with a broken neck, punctured lungs, and severe brain injuries. 
Her rescuer has little hope for her survival. Chances you get one back is about one in a million. It just doesn't happen. And uh, so I really didn't expect a whole lot, you know. Jackie remains in a coma for 31 days. When she emerges, she faces months of rehabilitation for the lingering disabilities caused by her head injuries. I couldn't remember anybody's names. Kind of stagger when I'd walk because my vision and my lack of balance. You know, I'd, I think of all the things that happen and I'm just like, it's amazing that I'm even here. Two other people from Jackie's town died in the ice storm. In the United States, these storms injure hundreds of people and kill, on average, 10 each year. They also cause an average half billion dollars in damage annually. This storm quadrupled that figure. Atmospheric icing expert Jones thinks these storms could become more frequent. We might be moving towards a warmer period if glo this global warming theory is really true, but that may mean that we have more storms um, than we had in the past. In the next decade or so, um, we're likely to see uh, more freezing rainstorms than we have seen in the past two decades, um, and they're likely to be more severe, but I think there will be more of them. As the South recovers from the ice storm, so does Jackie. She regains her eyesight and her ability to speak, read, and write. Very good. Very good. Nine months after an ice-laden branch almost killed her, she is able to turn over her crown. Good luck to the new mature name. You just have to take it, you know, take the punch as it hits you. Literally, I, I took the punch and uh, over, have overcome it, and I'm hoping to keep Keep going. Thank you. Good night, everybody, and drive safely. Up next, an attempted rescue goes wrong during a flash flood. In the mountains north of Rio de Janeiro, a police helicopter patrols the bustling Brazilian city of Belo Horizonte. The name means beautiful horizon but the mountainous backdrop can cause severe seasonal storms. When weather systems converge here, the mountains trap the air and make things worse. Our rain period starts in October and ends in March. The intense showers happen from December to February. We have strong winds and torrential rain, and that often causes very bad floods. The storm drains are all clogged. The water doesn't go in, it just passes over them. Geraldino Gomez lives in a neighborhood called The Avenue, a low-lying area next to a freeway that has a pedestrian walkway between lanes. One late December day, as traffic builds toward rush hour, everything seems normal. So when military policeman Ricardo Vieira shows up for duty, he makes only a routine check of his helicopter's rescue hoists. It was a very clear day, and there were no forecasts for bad weather. But just before we left to go home, the sky started to turn gray, and it began to rain. At the weather center, Jorge Moriera tracks an unusual phenomenon. Two weather systems came together to cause this problem. One brought humidity from the Amazon region, and the other was a cold front from the Atlantic. It's called La Nina, a reverse of the ocean warming trend, El Nino. The global climate is trying to balance itself by lowering sea surface temperature. Over Brazil, the resulting weather creates a torrent that surges down the heavily developed slopes surrounding the city. Vieira's rescue chopper is dispatched. It quickly became more intense, and we got the news that the avenue was flooded. The sudden flash flood has hit commuters at rush hour. It's just two hours since the first drop of rain. When we flew over the area, and I saw the people on top of buses, cars being washed away by the flood water, people stranded on trees, I realized 
that we need to act quickly. Sergeant Vieira prepares to be lowered into the floodwaters that have forced Geraldino Gomez into a tree. I tried to cross the avenue. It was impossible. I tried to come back and also couldn't make it. So I stayed up in the tree, stuck. I thought, now it's only me, God, and the tree. If it fails, that's the end of me. Sergeant Vieira now huddles with the boy, stranded with his bicycle, on top of a concrete street divider. The young man was very nervous. He was in a very difficult situation. He was in danger, and he had nowhere to go. So I got close to him and said, we'll get you out of here. Please stay calm. The rescue is safe, and you can trust me, because I'll take care of you. And then he relaxed, because he did trust me. The helicopter is ready to lift the boy to safety. But there's a problem. He didn't want to let go of his bike. He simply held on to it. So because a decision had to be made quickly, I said, OK, you can take your bike. I'm going to tie you up, and we'll go up together. As they're hoisted high above the flood, the pilot struggles to avoid power lines. But the rescue cable rubs against the chopper's landing skid and catches on a protruding bolt. The cable snaps. Vieira and the boy fall 80 feet to the swirling waters below. During those two seconds of the fall, I saw my entire life. I thought about my daughter, my wife, my friends, my job. It was like a movie in my mind. I did an analysis of my entire life in these two seconds, and I imagined this was it. I was finished. But the flood cushions the fall. Vieira and the boy are pulled to safety, unharmed. A rope is thrown to Geraldino Gomez, who is finally pulled to safety. But 16 people in Belo Horizonte lose their lives to the raging floodwaters. It's the worst flood the city has seen in 15 years. 70 people are killed in the region, and more than 26,000 left homeless during four days of torrential rains. If the city hall and the water company worried more about the storm drains, this could have been prevented. But change happens slowly. Ricardo Vieira is resigned to being called into action the next time rainstorms build in the mountains of Brazil. Floods will continue to happen. If a new rescue is needed in this same place, I'll come back and do it again.